Welcome back. Welcome back. Another edition of the trade series. We've been doing three trades each te- for every NBA team. We've done the Cavs. We've done the Warriors. We've done the Bulls. Like we're just going down the line here. Um, but today we got the Orlando Magic, a team that's pretty close to being in that top tier of the Eastern Conference with just a couple more years of development, plus maybe one or two smaller moves. I don't think there's any drastic changes needed to be made, but Finn came up with three trades. I'm, he's going to read them to me. I'm going to react to him, give him a grade, but leave your thoughts on these trades in the comments and send me some guys that you want the Magic to target, and maybe we'll do um, another video on them. So, Finn, give me trade number one. First of all, I've been on a historic run with these trade videos. Go check out the Warriors one. Go check out the Cavs one. We've been putting together some really good stuff here. I'm going to put it on the screen. This is the first one here. We got the Magic receive Trey Young for Jonathan Isaac, Carter II, Jet Howard, and two first-round picks. Where are you at on that? This, I mean, talk about filling a point guard hole. Yeah, Um Desperately, desperately in need of a point guard. I'm a Cavs fan, so watching that series last year, I thought Paolo was unbelievable. And then Suggs and uh, Walk Franz were really good at home, little struggled on the road, which is typical for young guys in their first playoff series. But this team needs a point guard, and they just need another consistent scoring option. And while, yes, we know Trey Young might not be the most efficient player in the world, he knows how to pass and he knows how to put the ball in the hole at no matter whether it's going to take him 25 shots or 15, he's going to get the ball in the hole. So I like this trade a lot. Initial feel, we'll talk through it. Maybe my grade will go up, but initial feel, I like this as an A minus. It doesn't completely mortgage your future because you still have your big pieces in stone while you're also adding an all NBA possible talent in Trey Young, who's going to give you 20 and 10 every year minimum. So um, I'm excited for this. And, It would just make Paolo's life so much easier because I thought he was debatably the best player in that series with Donovan Mitchell. Like that's how good Paolo was to me. Um, And I was really, really impressed. And adding a guy like Trey Young would be really, really good for the Magic. This is great because, and I like the way I put this together, because you don't have to give up anything too major. I think Jonathan Isaac's very underrated. He was great in that series as well. We had multiple dialogues about that throughout the series. But this isn't like getting rid of one of your super duper core guys. And yeah, it would take a ton of pressure off Paolo. I think they'd have a conversation about what happens in the last 30 seconds of a game. I think the ball has to go to Paolo. It's his team. But it would be nice to have the option and the distraction from the defensive end with Trey Young. It would fill a great hole. And he's a great lob thrower. Yeah. So I think he played well with the bigs. Like, yeah. No, also, another thing that I've feel as though the magic desperately needed was more consistent three-point shooting. There was so many times where this offense looked so poor, not only just getting into sets, but also closing them out with threes. Like there was multiple times the Cavs just completely left guys wide open because they can't make threes. They couldn't make threes last year. It's a shame um, because if they could, they would have beat the Cavs. And Trey Young's a guy that can hit threes. We all know that he's also obviously Trey Young. Everyone knows who Trey Young is. So this trade I like a lot. Um, it gives three point shooting and it gives a uh, point guard. Two things. I love, that- how, I love how your Trey hate seeps into every conversation about it because you had to slip in there. Possibly all NBA talent. Yeah, possibly. He's not there anymore in comparison, but um, could be a different but- situation, is all he needs. True. Um, and like the Hawks may blow it up. So you never know. Trey Young could be on the move here. Um, I love it for the Magic. I'm going to give this an A minus. Honestly, maybe even. Wow, strong start. Maybe even an A. Like the money, the money, the money's pretty close to working too. No, it does work. I tested it out. Okay. Um, but let's move on to trade number two. That was like the highest possible one. Like if you if you think you're ready to compete, you want to go, let's do that one. And then I think we're going down the line. Yeah. Yep. That is going to be how it works. So number two here. This is a beautiful trade because it involves two of my guys. D'Lo for Cole Anthony and Anthony Black. Anthony, heavy trade. D'Lo, again, filling that point guard gap. You like that? Cole Anthony, my guy. Played with him in middle school. Dog. But there are whole, like, he, to me, is not, he's really not doing much for them. Like, 
he doesn't move the needle for me at all, even though I think he's super talented. But he his ceiling, I think, is so low. And you get a guy like D'Lo who can really explode on some of these nights. So I'm gonna just I'm gonna alley you that your way. Yeah, no, I mean, if you want to think about this as fit, you get your point guard who can pass in D'Lo. And then you can also think about it. D'Lo just played the last few years with LeBron. As crazy as it sounds, Paolo and LeBron play a very similar style. LeBron more pass heavy while Paolo and perimeter oriented while Paolo's more works inside. But like they're both unbelievable driver of the basketballs and the magic ran through the offense through Paolo last year. So like this is what D'Lo knows how to do. He's going to give you three point shooting, which I mentioned about Trey young. He's also, he's going to be able to pass the ball and get you into sets. And it also helps D'Lo out as just a player because he gets the ball in his hands more than he would on say the Lakers, if that makes sense. Um, and then on the magic side of it, giving up Cole Anthony, I agree with you. I just don't think the fit there is perfect. Um, same thing with Markel Fultz. Um, like those guys to me last year just didn't really fit. Like Cole Anthony's a spark plug guy, but you have Mo Wagner for that. If coming off the bench, in my opinion. And if you add a guy like a D'Lo, you're, you don't need the depth because Jalen Suggs is really, really good too. So, um, D'Lo is going to be, would be a great fit on the magic. This one, I'm going a minus two. I like, okay. um, Anthony black. Yes. You just drafted him, but still he's not a guy that moves the needle for me. And I wasn't really impressed with what I saw from the probably 10 to 15 games. I watched him play. Um, like I just didn't love it. And yes, he's a big guard, but I just think that getting a solidified guy in D'Lo or Trey young could make much more of a difference than trying to wait on Anthony Black to catch up when you're still a little bit uncertain. With let me know, let me know how you feel about this. Uh My ceiling. This is how I feel about Cole Anthony. He could be the Derrick Rose of Norris Coles. Yeah, let that sink in. Yeah, I guess like one really good year, and then the Derrick Rose of Norris Coles. I'm gonna let you guys sit on that, but yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> again, filling that point guard gap. Shout out North School. Shout out North School. And like I said, it's an Anthony heavy trade. It is. It is. <laughs> a lot of A's involved. A lot of A's. Let's move on to Alaska. All right. This is like the lowest of keys. Um, it's pretty for Jet Howard in two seconds. Yeah. I mean, this one, I'm just going to give it a B. Like, I think it makes the magic better tomorrow. Um, and it doesn't really screw with their future. I know the magic rumor, at least, has been they've been unimpressed with what Jet Howard has put out. Obviously, one of the best shooters coming out of the draft. Haven't really seen him at all. So if you're the Celtics, you're getting a three-point shooter. And boy, do we know Missoula loves those guys. So you're getting a three-point shooter if you're Boston and two second-round picks. So you can maybe finagle a trade down the line when your team starts to get older because Drew's getting up there. Derek White's 30, which is weird to say out loud. Um and you're getting, and if you're the Magic, you're getting a point guard who can do a little bit of everything. Um, he can score, he can dribble, he can pass, he can shoot. Um, and I look, Pritchard's pretty good. I wish Slim was here to talk about Pritchard because he'll go on a fucking tangent here. But um, no, nah, Pritchard's just like a baseline kind of two year fix. And then you make a move or you draft a guard that you really think is going to take you to the next level. Um, and then he can move to the bench. But no, I mean, Peyton Pritchard would be a great fit. Championship DNA. Yeah, exactly. And you get that on your roster, which is never understated. It's what they need. Yeah. Like, if you're trying to take that hump without adding, like, a significantly elite player, guys with the championship DNA are a great way to get you out of the first or second round, even if it's someone low-key enough like Pritchard, who's also played in big games prior to last year. I mean, he hasn't got, like, a ton of burn, but I'm just saying being on the bench and being in the mix in big games – that translates in a locker room, especially with a group of young guys. So I just was trying to figure out a way to get like anyone with any type of championship DNA in there. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, based on the trades, I feel like your thought process was get guys that can create for themselves and others, but also can shoot the ball. Like that's the three you need guys that can shoot the ball. Like that's the three biggest things for me, for the magic to really help them move the needle. And these trades all do that. I also think that the Pritchard for just speaking on Pritchard, like 
he if he was drafted on a bad team off the rip, I don't like saying this, but because of the way his career has played out, because of his age and because of the exposure that he's gotten, I think it's a little bit different than a Jordan Poole situation where I think he could actually make a pretty big impact on another team in a different role if given more time and given more shots. I know we said that same thing about Jordan Poole with the championship DNA, literally this exact conversation, but I just feel like he could play a role somewhere else that's a little bit more heavy than what he does now. You know, I just think that it's kind of the reverse. Like Jordan Poole was really, really good and then got asked to take a step above where he was. And while, yes, Pritchard's really good, his role is not be six man of the year. It's come in and hit half court shots and give us some spark plays. So allowing him to take that next jump and just not having any real expectations. Jordan Poole had a ton of expectations to fulfill on a really bad team. Pritchard is on a really good team now where he has no expectations whatsoever going to a team in the magic that, sorry, that will be good, but you don't have to, you don't have to be Jesus. If you're Peyton Pritchard, you just have to be a little bit better than you are. And even if you do exactly what you do now, it still is going to be an upgrade over um, any of the guards right now besides Jalen Suggs on that team. So he'd be electric on the magic, but yeah, that's it for this one. Leave your thoughts in the comments, subscribe, like it, and we'll see you guys next time. Like it. <laughs>